So how many solutions does the system have? It doesn't tell us how we need to solve this. And uh, I'm going to choose to solve this visually for you because I find it to be really, uh, you know, you can, it, it's revealing when you, when you do it because you need to know how to graph these kinds of lines anyway. If you have the first equation, x equals negative 7, you notice that these are both equations that don't have the second variable. The first one only has x. This one only has y. Okay, and so if I was to graph, let's say, I'll graph in red, x equals negative 7. Well, what I'm doing is I'm putting a line that is perfectly vertical because it needs to cross the x-axis. And where does it need to cross it? It needs to cross it at negative 7. So it needs to cross the x-axis at negative 7. That's going to look like a line like that. Yeah, and we then have this equation that I'll mark in blue, and that's going to cross the y-axis. Sorry, I'm doing a terrible job of trying to put the arrow. There you go. Um, we're going to cross the y-axis, and see it says y, so that's the axis you're going to cross. Where are you going to cross it? At 8. So we put a horizontal, perfectly horizontal line at 8. Okay, um, now they're not asking for what the solution is, but I'm just going to point it out to you. The solution is right there, okay? It's right there because that's where they cross. And of course, you know that since this is perfectly vertical and this is perfectly horizontal, they can't have the same slope. So they're definitely going to meet and they're definitely not the same line, okay? If they never met, they had the same slope and... They had a different place that they crossed the y-axis, different intercept. Then they would never, they would be parallel, and they would never meet, and they would have zero solutions. But if they were exactly the same equation, they would meet at all points, and they would have an infinite number of solutions. Um, in this case, it's just two different lines with two different slopes, and so they're going to meet just once. So if you're trying to answer the question, how many solutions does the system have? You can say one. Boom. You're done. Okay, how many solutions does the system have? Well, if I was to rewrite this second equation, and I'm going to do that by subtracting 3x from both sides, you'd see that we would get there's the y remaining still. The y is still remaining here. We would get y equals negative 3x minus 7. And what does that mean? Let me just rewrite that a little better. What does that mean? What does that mean? Look, we have the same slope on both of these. So we're going to get a special case. They're either not going to meet or they're going to be exactly the same. And we've got to determine which situation this is. Okay? So they both have a slope of negative 3x. If they were the same line, they would have the same y-intercept here. Do they have the same y-intercept? No, they don't. They One has a 9, one has a negative 7. And since that's the case, then we know that it doesn't meet, and then the answer is no solution. Okay? But <clears throat> I'm going to show you one more thing because it's, it's worth seeing, okay, which is that you might not know that rewriting it turns it into an equation with the same slope. What would happen if you just said, gee, Mr. Massey, I see that this is isolated for y, so I'm just going to substitute y in. What would you get? So I'm going to take the other equation, 3x plus y equals negative 7. And where I see y, I'm going to put in what it's equal to. And what is it equal to? It's equal to negative 3x plus 9. Okay. Now, you will hopefully, if you were paying attention in class, you will remember that if when we try and get rid of one variable, the other variable goes away too, it's one of these special cases. So watch what happens. We say this is 3x, really minus 3x plus 9 equals negative 7. 
Um, all I did was get rid of the parentheses by saying that doesn't change anything. That plus adding that amount doesn't change anything. So what do we get? 3x minus 3x is 0. So 0 plus 9 is 9. That's the only thing left on that side. 9 equals negative 7. When we tried to, by the way, that is not true. When we tried to eliminate one of the variables, we tried to eliminate y by substituting its expression in terms of x. We tried to eliminate y. x went away too. That's one of these special cases. So when you get that happening, if you're going to be combining them, then what you need to look for is, do I get a true statement here or a false statement? You get a false statement. False statements like this will mean that it's no solution. Okay, these will be parallel. Okay, so how many solutions does the system have? Well, when I look at this, something very quickly jumps out at me. And if we look at these two equations, let's look at the x. How many x is there? One. How many here? Two. Twice as many. How many y's here? Three. How many y's here? Six. Twice as many. How many of the constant? We have seven. How many here? Fourteen. Twice as many. Aha. Uh -huh. Does that mean then that if I was going to do a legal move and multiply both sides of the original equation, x plus 3y equals 7, by 2, I would get the second equation? Let's see. 2 times x, 2x. Two, 2 times plus 3y plus 6y. And 2 times 7, 14. Yeah, look at that. I get the exact same equation. That must be two ways of writing the same line. And when you have it be describing the exact same line, we say infinite number of solutions. OK. Now, what if you didn't notice that? Just like before, you may not have noticed it. And you can say, oh, well, uh, let me slide this up a little bit. And I'm going to draw a line here. And I'm going to take that first equation, x plus 3y equals 7. And I'm going to solve for x, minus 3y, minus 3y. And you get x equals 7 minus 3y. Okay, I'm going to use that to plug into the other equation and see if I can solve for the variable. Okay, I don't know that it's the same line right now. So all I'm doing is saying, okay, well, the logical conclusion here would be for me to solve for one of the variables and then plug it in. I like substitution. So I'm going to take 2x plus 6y equals 14. And where I see x, I'm going to put in the expression that x is equal to. And what is that expression? It's equal to, we solved for on the bottom, it's equal to 7 minus 3y. And now I'm going to distribute. 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times negative 3x is negative 6x. Oops. Uh, y, I mean, negative 6y. And plus 6y equals 14. Now I've got to combine like terms. This is a y term and this is a y term. So I'm going to, I'm going to combine them. 14, negative 6y plus 6y is 0, so it just leaves you with only the 14 equals 14. That is always true statement, right? By the way, this is not a proof. I shouldn't put a check mark like that. This is not a proof. What it is, is we're trying to solve for it. And when one of the variables, we're trying to eliminate the variable x by replacing it with its equivalent value in terms of y, so that that just has y's and it also has y's, the second variable goes away as well. That's a special case. So then you're looking for, do I get a true statement here or do I get a false statement? If you look at problem 4b, you can see that you got a false statement. And that meant there was no solution here. You get an always true statement no matter what. And of course, that means that there is an infinite number of solutions.